You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. The World at Eight, the number one in nationalist news. Highlights of the news today, Wednesday the 15th of January 2014. Birmingham men arrested at Heathrow on suspicion of terrorism. Met Police report, corrupt Freemasons run the UK legal system. Row over BBC climate change conference cover-up. Le Pen to do maximum to block further EU integration. Aimna Kafar has a patriotic rant on community cohesion. Letter calls for United European Action on Migration. World's first Kit Kat store opens in Tokyo. Thought for the day, fairly short and to the point. And finally, a Vaseline joke. Enjoy. UK News. Birmingham men arrested at Heathrow on suspicion of terrorism. Two 21-year-olds arrived from Istanbul after it was believed they had spent some time in Syria. Two men from Hansworth have been arrested on suspicion of terrorism offences relating to activities in Syria. They were detained at Heathrow Airport at about 3.30pm after they had arrived back in the UK on a flight from Istanbul. Unarmed officers from the West Midlands Counter-Terrorism Unit detained the men, both aged 21, as they disembarked. They are now being questioned at a police station in the West Midlands area. The pair are believed to have travelled to Syria in May last year. Metropolitan Police report corrupt Freemasons run the UK legal system. Secret networks of Freemasons have been used by organised crime gangs to corrupt the criminal justice system, according to a bombshell Metropolitan Police report leaked to The Independent. Operation Tiberius, written in 2002, found underworld syndicates use their contacts in the controversial Brotherhood to recruit corrupted officers inside Scotland Yard and concluded it was one of the most difficult aspects of organised crime corruption to prove against. The report, marked secret, found serving officers in East Ham, East London, who were members of the Freemasons, attempted to find out which detectives were suspected of links to organised crime from other police sources who were also members of the society. Famous for its secret handshakes, Freemasonry has long been suspected of having members who work in the criminal justice system, notably the judiciary and the police. World date. I would rather have a British Freemason than a plethora of Asians working against us in or out of the plods. Row over BBC climate change conference cover-up. The BBC is dragged into a row over its coverage of climate change after spending thousands of pounds trying to keep details of an eco-conference attended by top executives secret. The BBC spent thousands of pounds over six years attempting to cover up a climate change seminar credited with shaping its coverage of the environment. It emerged today. At least £20,000 was spent out by the corporation battling a freedom of information request about the conference that featured lectures by green activists and scientists, it was revealed. Almost 30 of the BBC's most senior executives, including the head of TV News and future Director General, attended the event in 2006, which was funded with a grant from the former Labour government. World date. What a combination for corruption. Labour and the BBC. Stalin would be laughing in his grave. European News. Le Pen to do maximum to block further EU integration. French far-right leader Marine Le Pen has promised that nationalist parties will do the maximum to block further EU integration if they make gains in May's European elections. I don't expect anything from the European system except that it explodes, she told journalists in Paris. Letter calls for united European action on migration. Cooperation needed to settle newcomers, says Italian Premier, European Union countries must find a way to better cooperate on immigration issues rather than leaving individual nations to struggle on their own. Premier Enrico Letta said Monday during a state visit to Mexico. The topic is of particular interest in Italy, where thousands of immigrants, many fleeing war and poverty in North Africa and the Middle East, land on the country's most southern shores each year. Most arrive by boat and many die during the perilous crossing, while others are forced to live in desperate conditions in underfunded and inadequate migrant centres. After a series of rescues and migrant crises in the fall, the European Union promised more help for Italy, often the first point of arrival for many migrants. 
During an interview with Mexican television network Televisia, Letta said that Italy had learnt from a hard experience about the importance of effective multilateral cooperation in a strong Europe that doesn't leave any country alone and on its own. Letta also referred with, to strong words from Pope Francis when he visited the migrant centre on Italy's tiny island of Lampedusa in July and denounced the globalisation of indifference towards migrants who died trying to reach Italy. In October alone, an estimated 400 refugees died off the southern Italian island of Lampedusa in two boat disasters. Letter said that the strong words of the Pope should prompt us to ensure that this issue will be addressed at the multilateral level. World date. Consider the source. Look at the 400 who have died compared to the millions who have moved to the UK and the rest of Europe. Italy wants help? Well, it can help itself. The Australians are doing it and in the future the simplest way will be to prevent these people leaving their countries because that is the only way any European country will stand a chance of maintaining its own culture and religion. People seem to think we live in a swap my country for yours culture and we have tried this and it doesn't work. Indifference has worked for the Holy Catholic Church for centuries so why point it out now? Immigration must be stopped at source, not midway. I'm Kafar has a patriotic rant on community cohesion. Hi guys, it's me again, your raving lunatic, Arnold Kufar. Now, some of the things I say are very strange and may come across as the ravings of a lunatic. However, it makes sense to me, so people that cannot see the good sense that I am speaking are very, very strange. There are strangers amongst us, and some of them are very clever. Essentially, they have taken the good-heartedness of the British people and thrown it back in our faces, as they think we are fools. Perhaps they are right, as our elites encourage this sort of behaviour and persecute the British, who object to this charge towards community cohesion something we all want. They come in all shapes and colours bringing their alien ideologies and religions into our lands whilst we stand idly by as we are afraid of being called a racist, a xenophobe or being Islamophobic. A lot of people are terrified of these words as they go against the core doctrine of multiculturalism. That is the testing ground to see if you are politically correct. However, how can you prove the unprovable? Quite easily, actually, as a racist or Islamophobic act is predicated on the word of those who have supposedly experienced it, no matter how or where or even whether it is a truthful statement. The strangers are taken at their word as they've experienced something only they can understand. So the perpetrators of these heinous acts are guilty, even if they are innocent, guilty or indifferent. Now this seems fair enough to me, however, I've got to say this, I'm a lunatic, as all of you who read my various statements and writings will know. Should this be proven in any non-approved court by manipulated public opinion or even in actual courts of our lands, then you are hounded out of your job, put in jail, have your door kicked in, and are accused of being a terrorist and dragged out of your house by the police. Your computer confiscated as, of course, the thought police are looking for evidence. And they will find it. I must say I find this totally justifiable and people who object to this have something seriously wrong with them and need to be re-educated in the most severe way. Do not worry, I will help with this noble project as I am a cohesive person and want to help our great society get along all together. I just want to help. Also, God help you if you happen to be a nationalist and a member of our party. I'll come to that, the EDL. Even though you are none of the things that you are accused of, you are guilty. Why can't you just understand that? You are guilty. 
And you just want to express your democratic rights. That makes you even more guilty. Now, you don't even have the right to march against this in your own country. Our country, without the threat of violence and police of the Marxists or our peaceful religion of tranquility. In my humble opinion, they have every right to arrest, kill, dismember or persecute any of us disturbing community cohesion. Now get that through your heads. After all, we must stick together through thick and thin. Must we not? And if you have any objection to this, you are not cohesive enough. Now, you must do this with the consent of the established order. This is staffed by strangers and junior elites who are just nice people. Really, very caring white indigenous people who carry none of the burdens that we carry of being called racist. They are British born and bred and think they are. However, they also have the additional burden of being white and have to prove at every junction that they are ideologically perfect to the strangers and they're equally perfect masters, some of whom are white, some of whom are strangers and some of whom are just indifferent to be quite honest. I know I am not perfect yet but I'm working on it with the aid of the BBC and watching EastEnders, also Coronation Street and other sorts of things. Believe me, this is hard work, but being a patriotic sort of person, I will attend to this heavy labour or whatever it is. I want to become a reform person and no doubt the BNP will help me with this onerous task. Nick, can I have a grant or something to help me? I prefer cash, but a good kick up the backside might help me with my heavy load on my road to perfection. So, just be fair. I think I should be an inspiration to all. I am perfection, or at least in the process of becoming a perfect idiot. In fact, I know loads of people who already are. I used to work with them and unfortunately or fortunately nothing has improved thank god for some of them working in itself is an alien concept and an imposition on their human rights they may very well have a point here though i fail to see it but i can't understand why i do not know and here again, I fall down on my preconceptions on the nature of people. I'm just a miserable failure in terms of cohesion or even common sense. Why, oh why, did this have to happen to me? Someone please explain, and no doubt I will get some critical comments, but it helps me in some strange way. Strangers love this, as it proves their righteous pretensions towards being persecuted by bigots. This, whilst they steal, either by stealth or through the public services, getting preferred jobs in them, and generally taking advantage of everything they have never paid for. This is great. We are enslaved because we enslaved them about 200 years ago. And now it is payback time. Yay! Their parents... Just send the money they earn or steal to Pakistan or to some other country. Billions and billions of pounds. Then we give them foreign aid as well. How generous, how nice of us, how we should be proud of ourselves for contributing in this way. And there is no contradiction here or even implied. It makes my heart swell with pride and makes me want to vote Tory for the rest of my miserable days on the dole. I am looking forward to my zero hours contract or the work camps they are setting up. What a jolly good idea, as I happen to like breaking up rocks and penury. Perhaps they could just starve people like me to death. After all, it is all I deserve. They could also include all the old people, so at least I have some company. 
This would also help to reduce the national debt. They never intend to contribute unless they have a job they are actually not qualified for. Not with a nice boss who is forgiven for being white until such time as he or she is no longer needed and sees what a mess they are make of things. Then he or she are labelled as bigots, or even worse, as described in the first paragraph that I have conveniently forgotten. Some of the poor um, bastards who inherit this mess are even worse off as, they are abs as there is absolutely nothing they can do about it because they will be labelled as being racists. This is a self-repeating boom to community cohesion and it will just continue particularly if they happen to be non-strangers. They are guilty of something and it must be obvious to the most non-judgmental of people that somewhere in their thought process they are guilty of xenophobia and are Islamophobic, racist and sexist and uh, this and that and the other. This is not 1984, this is now and they are guilty of doublethink, of not thinking correctly enough. Why can't you people get this through your heads? They are guilty of thought crimes, as are we, on our way to the knock of the door from the thought police, as should all the readers or listeners of this piece. He or she are then replaced by devious means or by reorganisation, and the leading lights of the strangers are appointed, even though they may not have the mental acuity to do the job. Good old. However, this not, does not matter. Only equality matters. And this is the litmus test for perfection or promotion. This is an organised system that is staffed by common purpose and its acolytes. Of course, the multicults of the system kick in and knock the lights out of anyone who disagrees. They are fully justified in doing so in my double think opinion. Now we have the added delights of another influx of strangers from the continent, the Roma, who would steal just about everything they can get their hands on. Mind you, that is progress. We as a party, as a British National Party, want more of this. This is a progression we must achieve to achieve perfection. Unfortunately, this is something I have yet to achieve. Thank you, I'm Nakafar. It's good to hear your voice again. World News The world's first Kit Kat store is opening in Tokyo. Japan is famed for its Kit Kats. The country has a slew of unique flavours that simply aren't available elsewhere. On this month it will get the first Kit Kat speciality store on Earth. Called Kit Kat Chocolatory, the store will open on January the 17th at the Saibu department store in Tokyo's Ikibukuru. It'll be located in Saibu's basement along with the department store's other food sellers. In Japanese department stores, the basement is typically home to amazing and delicious food vendors. According to IT Media, the Kit Kat Chocolatory will offer special Kit Kats that are aimed at adult taste buds and suit each season. The speciality shop is teaming up with sweet shop Le Patissier Tagagi for its gourmet Kit Kat store with a pastry chef, Yasumasa Tegakai, overseeing and developing new Kit Kats. World at eight. I can't wait to try the wasabi. Hot, hot, hot. Thought for the day, fairly short and to the point. Now don't get me wrong, I am not standing up for immigrants or immigration from the EU and in fact I'm not standing up for immigration from anywhere, anytime, by anyone, anymore. That should be our mantra from now on and certainly not jump on the very pointed and barbed wire fence which apparently delineates the EU masses from the world masses as far as any claptrap like that goes. Immigrants, asylum seekers and illegals are all in the same category for me, whether from France, via Africa, Arabia or India or Poland. I don't care. 
I and we in this country are well past the having a few professional foreigners is good for the business brigade and the well-worn Brits don't do cheap labour to the saving a soul who will be tortured on return premise. When in fact most of those from those particular countries return to them and bring more of their families in on a self-perpetuating roller coaster of humanity. There is no difference to our services and benefits whether they come primarily to work, in which case they are taking British jobs, if any are not advertised in their countries already, or to suck out the life of our benefit system by overbreeding. They're as bad as each other for this country and its people. The media is now in full voice over the EU and its stance towards Britain, which has always been rotten and is getting even more so now that we have shown a smidgen of balls in actually questioning the EU migrations in particular. And that particular hammer seems to be wavering in mid-air, but we're still honing in too little and too late. Our enemy has been and always will be the setup within the European Union and what they finally want to achieve with our country. The EU has been allowing, and indeed encouraging, migration to the UK through their own borders ever since the institution became what it is today, a new world dictatorship, all of its own volition. It makes very little difference now to our cities and towns whether we accommodate a few thousand more Romanians or Bulgarians, because as we all know, this is the final push for many to join their compatriots, who have already slipped in years ago, so all the fuss about Poles being jailed over here because Polish jails are full is also extremely odd. Most Poles are over here and have been for years, so how come their jails are full? Come to think of it, our jails are full to busting, and if they are full of 100% English, I will publicly ride through London naked. I think I'm safe in saying we must have the largest foreign origin jailbird population in the world and one Polish child killer will not a difference make. Our taxpayers have been paying out for prayer rooms, Korans, holidays, drugs, food, learning courses and books and general playtime for our foreign criminals for years and then allow them to have a vote and human rights as well. No wonder they won't go home to serve jail time. I would like to bet the true stats of how many Somalis, West Af Somalis, West Indians, Africans, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, Iraqis, Kurds and many, many more foreign or so-called British-born criminals have been hidden from the public. Because, to coin a phrase, our white ethnicity guys are getting older and more infirm and we're not breeding like we should, so exactly who is filling our jails now? In fact, laws which allow for late abortions and morning after pills are not being taken up by our ethnic communities, but by our white girls and our women. They are the ones being targeted for careers, drink, drugs, early sexualization, alternative lifestyles, partners instead of husbands. What the hell is a partner? It sounds like a tennis coach or something. Very odd, but all encompassing, as is the present climate towards the white civilization. Immigrant mothers are not discouraged from breeding from the get-go and are happily occupying our maternity wards throughout the land. Imagine coming to a country in which you don't get shot at, are not starved to death and are encouraged to breed children who will get a free education and not get their heads or arms chopped off in a local religious or tribal conflict and you get a free home, car and phones. It's only human nature to grab it. But it has had devastating consequences to the country that has to go through it, and we are going through it. None of the countries that most of these people come from are near the UK. Even the Eastern Europeans have to go thousands of miles to reach France to come over, and the rest of the ones from Muslim countries even further, as those from Africa, India and the Far East. None are technically near our island. We do not share borders with the rest of Europe, and our only tie is unfortunately that New World Order channel, which is still unfortunately with us. Why didn't the Muslim terrorists attack that instead of the World Trade Center? Because it provides the quickest way to reach the UK. That is why all the arms and drugs and bomb-making equipment come through that underwater immigration center. The methodology behind Cameron and the benefits for new, new EU for new EU migrants is just as little nasty to say he is considering how immigration from the EU will affect us. When in fact that and all the world immigration has been affecting us for the last 40 years. Farage the garage is even more odd. Insofar he wants more immigration from India and none from Europe. And if you look deeply into this you can see the reason. 
Farage is anti-white and anti-British. He wants more uneducated peasants from the Indian subcontinent over here and less white educated Europeans. Why? The peasants will keep down the wages as they virtually as they are virtually unemployable back home, breed more voters for him and enlarge the already massive third world migration to this country. Farage is also pro-Muslim, so if thousands of these new migrants are Muslim, that will also keep out a vast majority of new white Europeans, as they have the same problem in their own countries, and there's little point in moving from one Islamified country to another. Job done. Whilst he will be in Europe, well away from the enrichers, and coining in the old shekels, thank you. The real problem is that without new laws to curtail immigration from all over, not just Europe, and overseeing immigrants when they are already in this country as to the fashion in which they live and do not integrate. That is more important than ruffling a few EU feathers and being lectured on how to run one's own country. We need to, as a people, make sure our politicians do what will benefit us and not the immigrants as previously done. We must make sure we are at the top of the food chain, not at the bottom. And to do that, we will need laws and rules, and they must be applied fairly and squarely. To make sure immigrant families stay together, even if redeployed. Our country will not sustain any more newcomers, and indeed we will have to rethink as to whether we can sustain the enormous amount of people we already have on this island. After all, we cannot just shove them over a border, can we? What this country needs now is tough love, and if few eggs fall, then so be it. The Germans really won the war, didn't they? Because after that war, the Western world lost its bottle in a big way. They must have, when they put strangers' children above those children of their own tribes. The world does not respect weakness in any form, and this country certainly doesn't need weakness at this point in time. And finally, a joke about Vaseline. A man doing market research knocked on a door and was greeted by a young woman with three small children running around at her feet. He says, I'm doing some research for Vaseline. Have you ever used the product? She says, yes, my husband and I use it all the time. And if you don't mind me asking, what do you use it for? We use it for sex. The researcher was a little taken back. Usually people lie to me and say they use it on a child's bicycle chain or to help with a gate hinge. But in fact, I know that most people do use it for sex. I admire you for your honesty. Since you've been frank so far, can you tell me exactly how you use it for sex? The woman says, I don't mind telling you at all. My husband and I put it on the doorknob so the kids can't open the door. And you thought it was going to be a dirty joke, didn't you? Shame on you. You've been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart and I wish you all a very good night. <laughs>